Hi, this is Mary Ellen Bornad from Bucks County Community College. We're going to give a short little preview of the ADDIE model of instructional design. Think of instructional design as a plan to change the way you think about your course. This certainly applies to both face-to-face -face and distance learning, online learning. However, designing an online course for the first time is an excellent time to think in a different way. I'll steal an analogy from Winnie the Pooh. Edward the Bear, that was Pooh's original name, knew only one way to come downstairs. At the hands of Christopher Robin, he bumped his head on every step. So think of instructional design as a plan to create a course that will introduce your students to a new way of coming down the steps or understanding what you are teaching. Instructional design will help students follow you down the staircase of course content without bumping their heads on every step. Instructional design is a tool. It describes the process for designing an effective course. A successful course is built on a foundation of learning theories, learning styles, and strategies. The ADDIE model is a system. It is steps that you can use to design a learner-centered course rather than a teacher-centered course. It's the material you're teaching cognitive or skill-based. You're creating a learning environment pathways for learners. You're taking advantage of best practices, considering diverse learning styles, creating active learning, web hunts, reflection, application of learning material. You're building in interaction, sharing ideas leading to discovery in a community of learners. You will be assessing student outcomes. You want to know if the strategy you use to deliver content work. Did the student get what you wanted them to get? Let me share the process I went through with one of the first courses I developed here at Bucks, a fire investigation course. The course content is expansive, scientific, observation-driven, skill-based, and procedure-bound. It involved most of Bloom's described competencies, knowledge, comprehension, application, analysis, synthesis, and evaluation. The outcomes expected, observation, understanding, methodology, application to various scenarios, recognizing patterns, drawing conclusions, and making choices would have to be demonstrated. For the interface, I wanted to create a graphic environment that presented context for these learners. The first rule for the optimal sequencing of courseware suggested by instructional designer Robert Gagne is gain attention. I wanted to create an environment to do that so I chose colors and icons that were related to firefighting. Interaction is an essential ingredient in any course, face-to-face -face or online. Studies show learning increases exponentially when interaction takes place among students and a learning environment is created. Assessment would have to involve a scenario in which a knowledge-based test would also involve critical thinking, judgment in a real-life setting. Think of your users first, the receivers of the information in your course, your students. You see lots of diversity, age, race, culture, abilities, and learning styles. Some will be able to read the assigned material, get it, and make parallels. Others will need to see it in some visual way, in your face-to-face -face or virtual classroom. Maybe you act out a scenario, or create a role-playing scenario, or demonstration, so students can see an outcome more vividly. Some students need to hear it and see it, or hear it to see it, and some need to move through the process like a dance routine. Don't worry about how you do this right now. Now, analyze your material. Design is the step in which you use the course objectives, what the students are expected to demonstrate, describe, or perform, the instructional events you want students to accomplish. Is your content or subject matter cognitive or knowledge-based? Is it skill-based to be learned by repetition, recognition, or mastery? Does your content require behavioral learning, changing the way tasks are done? Now you're looking at your course subject matter. What are the main points you want your students to get? Why? And what do you expect them to do with the knowledge? Apply it elsewhere, make parallels, create another paradigm. You are the guide in this learning journey. Help them gather, compare, see, observe, analyze, and synthesize information. Do students need to learn this material step by step? Is it building block material? What is the best way to help students make connections? Do you need to stimulate recall of prior knowledge? That's another Gagne step. 
In the development phase, use the information gleaned from your course analysis, the audience, the goals, the objectives, and content, and utilize the good teaching principles. The GTPs are tools that we know foster learning. Using the GTPs, you will encourage contact and communication, thereby establishing teacher presence and a community of learners. Develop reciprocity and cooperation among students. Encourage active learning. As an instructor, you will give prompt feedback, emphasize time on task, communicate high expectations, show respect, take advantage of diverse talents and ways of learning in your students. In your role as a guide, help students create a new paradigm, push, pull, lead, whatever it takes to get them to mull, share, analyze, and synthesize. In short, discover a new way of seeing. My favorite cartoon is a chick breaking out of his eggshell. The caption says, wow, a new paradigm. You will be looking for the best, most relevant way to deliver your material and address a variety of learning styles. Materials can be text, graphics, simulations, figures, pictures, and sound. Check for links and databases on the web that can be used to foster independent research and learning. PowerPoint works well when it is designed well, so clarify your message and present your points with voiceover or music. Include animations and simulations to explain concepts and audio files of your motivating lectures or unit introductions. Use discussion to encourage peer interactivity and chat rooms for real-time discussion or interview with an expert. Chat rooms also can be assigned to groups for project work. Many online presentation tools allow students to work in groups, exchanging material, then merging their work and presenting a final project. Think about skills involved in the learning process. Knowledge, observation, critical thinking, ability to form an opinion and express or argue that opinion. Keep some of these rules of the road in mind when planning. Develop a consistent style in presentation and navigation. Chunk information. Deliver content in various ways to avoid memory overload. Take advantage of electronic media, web searches and sharing, blogging, listservs and forums, role playing and discussion. Games, puzzles and flashcards are great practice and they're great assessment activities. They build confidence in students. Devices like a Discovery of the Week or Treasure Hunt transfer knowledge from instructional setting, what they read about, to real life setting. Activities like these help students recognize patterns around them. It gives them an opportunity to add to and to apply their knowledge. How will you assess whether learning occurred? To evaluate intellectual skills, ask for concepts to be explained, labeled, or classified, or for rules to be applied, or principles demonstrated. Problem solving will demonstrate the ability to generate solutions or procedures. Attitudes and judgments are demonstrated by a critical thinking process and expression of options. Evaluation should elicit performance. Create a situation where the learner does something with the newly acquired behavior or learning. Evaluate the course outcome. Did the course deliver the material effectively? Did your students get it? Your evaluation tools can be tests, demonstrations, or problem-solving activities. Papers, essays, and projects can be part of this evaluation. When giving instructions to students, advise what you expect the assignment to demonstrate the depth and mastery of knowledge or the application of critical thinking. When listing the elements that you expect to be present in the assignment, it is a good idea to include the grade value of each. You should build surveys into your course to get student input or to conduct a discussion on the effectiveness of your online class. Ask for student suggestions. Let their suggestions roll, pie in the sky. Maybe you won't be able to implement those suggestions right away, but boy, will they be valuable as you revise your course each semester.